dig this great, Baby, this great concept of slow racing. racing. We're still waiting to see how it comes out. Competitors, go to the starting Deep in the head, various birds, traded in ways with these birds Enabling them to hover, to hover. Now they too, 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 Possibilities. You could spend a year with one side. Or paint disgusting slogans on your account. The results of the slogans are nothing to slide in the side. It seems likely that the winner will be Dorps. Who died in the years of your age? The early phase of the Jackson below the middle of the advancing roughly 28 centimeters into the bridge. We can test it to lose the smooth At this point, at this phase will be decided by the question of who falls over dead on the starting line. And who? Due to some mistake, accidentally travels some small distance down the track. It seems unlikely that anyone will anyone complete this big commodity of the world. Oh, I'm 
burrowing hippopotami of time and some kind of elk dance covered in Turkish. The sequel, even worse, Mark Hamill as some kind of octopus thing. Tie in record made by members of U2. Octopus man rides deep into the earth on his tunneling hippopotamus. He marries the elk queen in an abortive attempt to forestall hostilities. He writes to a well known colonist for advice. My elk bride's constant bile of purple slime repulses me. What should I do? Bottle it up with a label. Sell it as glue. Too late. Too late. The tunneling hippopotamus has reached 15,000 feet. Pressure down. Pressure down. It's unstoppable. Unstoppable. The day is saved by unexpected traveling piggies. Sir, what can I do? 17,000 blue whales are riding on sheep back. Enter William Shatner with two writer, Dead Sturgeon. Unconvincing monologue or duologue is played backwards with subtitles in Welsh. Welsh, Welsh, Welsh. A pickled light bulb rides up on weasel bat. I bring a message from Princess Flippy. Seventeen thousand dogs impeded. And some hippos fetch nurse dolphins aimlessly from the circulating game. The sea level rises immediately. The whales return to their element and float freely into the jelly fields of the stream. Most of the sheep was squashed. A select few escape on lava bag. Princess Princess Shiraza, who does elaborate tricks and has been taught to ride a duck. She rules over the continent of Epithubia in the absence of the queen who disappeared many years ago while hunting clans on Alicator. semi-mystified about her sudden unexplainable banishment. The alligator, nourished, rides away on fishback.
I'm tunneling rapidly through the sticky waters. Elastic fish like rewound pianos inch repulsively by. A rising cloud emits a misty mystery. The mystery of the mist was missed. You can't staple things to your car. I've tried. Actually, you can just about staple things such as receipts, bus tickets to the seats, or sometimes the steering wheel. But the outside layers of the car are pretty much 100% resistant to stapling, including the tires, which is rather disappointing. You can't staple things to rats, water, trees, or policemen. I don't know for certain whether you can staple things to sheep, because I have run out of staples during previous tests. You certainly can't staple anything to a balloon, which is a shame, because think how mega cool that would be. If you could be a donkey, which donkey would you be? I can't answer, because I don't know any donkeys individually. I suppose I'd be a hedgehog or a raven in the sea. Equipped with a special mask allowing me to breathe. Tunneling deep into the minty water. Mollusk orchestras fascinate.
Exaggerator Mr. Squirrel Face Didact's expanded plan Proper authorities were notified some time ago Weevils continued to levitate Weasels spot translated emissions. Drills dance with rubber anvils in an atmosphere of discernment. The Prime Minister has authorized the use of an ice bomb. Scubgrex men dance a witty nomenclature with low down grooves. Accompanied by three Martian woodworm flowers, Miss Plenty Weed tiptoes to the amusement of a prawn superintendent. The drills stop their dance. Change masonry bits for screwdrivers. Mr. Squirrel Face is fitted with an adapter. Now his nostrils pipe a high-pitched Norwegian translation of every sentence uttered. The resultant meaningless cacophony is incomprehensible to both Flemish and Norwegian speakers alike. Rubber Anvil lands mostly inconsequentially on his squirrely head. Miss Plenty Weed would adjust his tie, but he has eaten it. Oh, Mr. Squirrel Face, your nervous bad habit. He pays no attention, chewing a pocket calculator in vain. The pyramids may have been used to project raccoons vertically, proclaims Weevil at five kilometers altitude. The ancient Egyptians certainly had the technology to launch and propel raccoons in the horizontal plane. The excavations of Lord Smazzy Face at Al Pakamak reveal a muscle velocity of 8 raccoons per second for the Pharaoh Mumu's 60 foot horizontal rodent projection. The impact of the very animal against the 45 degree side of the Great Pyramid of Sneezer would in most cases have sent the animal rebounding vertically upwards in the only remaining available direction. 
In this way, raccoons were sent to Sirius, home planet of the Egyptian raccoon fish monsters. The raccoons probably had little notes attached to their collars, permitting the ancients to communicate special messages to the forces of outer space. At Al Pakamak, a number of these missives were successfully retrieved. Alien masters, these raccoons are clearly the supreme life form on this planet Earth. We are sending them to you to protect them, to protect them from the unclean and worthless race of the humans. Hi Ben, say hello. Earth colonists, please desist from plaguing us with these mindless monsters. They are eating all the strawberries. Too many lapdogs have been sent to Ganymede. It's a disgrace. Many distinguished ladies are composing missives addressed to persons in high office. A junior minister has resigned. and West Highland Whites don't even know where Ganymede is. They suspect it is somewhere in Scotland. The cover-up is exposed by narrow broad sheets. The Prime Minister chairs a meeting of the World Action Network Krypton Emergency Room. On Ganymede, the moon of Jupiter, the resident slug-like beings are waddling around in the tinfoil ocean with plastic bags full of yapping small dogs. More arrive nightly in space-going yachts crewed by mysterious female snail people. We must impress upon the humans the necessity of their desisting from the supply of these cuddly companions. General Specific consults the media wolf pack. There's nothing we can do, he admits. An automated poodle farm has gone rogue. A warped artificial intelligence process is throwing everything we have into small dogs for Ganymede. stock market tanks, recrudesces and rotates about its axis in a warped negative dimensional space. An obscure Indian chimney sweep is appointed president of the World Bank. The canary becomes king of Ecuador. The government commissions a review.
Cut to smart-ass scientist. The solution is simply to do nothing at all and rely on our old friend gravity to bring those lovable little puppy dogs safely back to Earth. Too late. We've already sent a battalion of deadly stormtrooper sheep to blast those puffy thieving Ganymedians to hell. Dusseldorf with a toothpaste mayonnaise. What a concept! If only you can get used to the taste of mint, you need never brush your teeth again. Weasel to weevil. If you can stomach that, why not toothpaste ice cream? Weevil to weasel. Weevil vomits chloride in few minutes of slime. Stomach acids completely corrode and destroy all of Weevil's teeth. Weasel to weasel, aside. Drop this dental hygiene drive has misfired most unhappily. I must escape. Using the apparatus issued to me by L. Bicycle powered bat wings attached. Weasel hops hopefully. Falls down a well. Weasel to weasel, sir. Having lost its teeth. The weevil is unable to express its deep insights and the profoundly compassionate yet realistic worldview its unique part of life experience has taught it. Weasel to weevil. Can you chuck down a levitating bicycle? It's a physical impossibility. Weevil slurps a refreshing milk chair tediously while they
goon hose pipe etymology, frazzled adversary. These days, hidden chickens waltz. These frosty times, exploding petunia. Night bears frosty sing these. Pun envelope, bud dryer. Spun Sam's reverse stupid instructions, hitch cold cattery, advice door, frozen for band. The happy fairy alien beats its adder shaped apparatus on a picture of a car park attendant. Some moonwalking birds reverse past. We are in the bizarre cosmos of Defender and its sequel, Defender 2. On a very small planet, we go round and round, passing triangular mountains over and over. The backwards birds pass the fur creature over and over and over. Green things hunt shapeless, pixelated blobs. Try not to shoot the pot. The Air Force confronts a new challenge. How can we maintain proper airborne offensive defensive capabilities given the resource depletion? I.e., how do we bomb people once all the oil has run out? We shall replace all F-14 fighters, stealth bombers and Apache helicopters with organic systems. To wit, flying sheep! By genetically engineering our fleecy flocks with eight-foot bat wings, we can create an invincible flying army! The notoriously warlike and savage species of the sheep will take to the air in vast squadrons raining down death upon the enemy with their super flamethrowers. That's a silly idea. Flamethrowers are short-range weapons. The sheep would have to fly so low that the whole exercise becomes pointless. Why not simply equip an ordinary sheep with a flamethrower and attack from the surface? So don't sheep have flamethrowers ordinarily? I was under the impression that each newborn warrior sheep was hatched from the steel matriarch with a six-foot flame dispenser and fuel tank cybernetically attached. No, that's not the sheep. That's the insane war robots of Plot to God Box 7. You have been confused. Oh, sorry. I misunderstood. Get the whole idea. Look out! A flock of bar bombers has been launched from Brattleby Farm. They're vectoring in on our coordinates. I hear our enemies have beaten us to it. But the bar bombs fail to explode. In case the thick fleece they bounce unpredictably. Small children take the cuddly bombs home, decorating them with false eyes, wigs, and warehouse attendants' uniforms. What a superb idea. All bombs, bullets, cyanide gas canisters, and nuclear warheads should be made subject to strict health and safety legislation. Special measures should be taken to ensure these things cannot cause harm to living things. Then they could be sold over the counter at every corner shop with no danger to anyone. The industry would thrive, and no one would get hurt. New Wackwas Otiosis Completely Safe Neutron Bomb is a paper bag 
stuffed with damp cotton wool. This new improved neutron bomb design has none of the problems associated with traditional neutron bombs and is generously provided for only half the price. <laughs>